All right. Geometry lesson five. Uh, they don't. They get a little uncreative with the with the lesson titles here. It's just more theorems about lines and planes. So if you were excited about lines and planes before, you're going to be super excited to get more lines and planes. Uh, let's see. So lines and planes are classified by whether or not they intersect and how they intersect. So we learn more information based upon the types of intersections that we have. When, sli when lines intersect to form right angles, the term that we use, so we call them perpendicular. So right angle, 90 degrees, perpendicular, all mean the same thing. Okay. Uh, the symbol to show that two lines are perpendicular are two lines that meet uh, perpendicularly. Basically, it's an upside down T is our symbol for these two lines are perpendicular. Uh, what you might see done is if I've got, let's say, line, uh, line AB is perpendicular to line CD, I would represent that by that. Okay? Without even drawing the two lines, I've told you how those two lines are going to intersect. I might actually see that, you know, with something like this, okay, where this is AB and this is CD. Okay, so I went from the statement to a picture. All right, coplanar lines uh, do not intersect. Uh, are called parallel lines. So coplanar lines, lines that are on the same plane but do not intersect are actually parallel uh, lines. The symbol to show that two figures are parallel is what's going to look like, well, just like two parallel lines, straight up and down, kind of like a little highway there. Planes that do not intersect, planes that do not intersect are parallel planes. Uh, what we have here, and the reason I've got these little green arrows, are the indicators for showing that two lines are parallel. If I don't have those, I'm not necessarily proven that those two lines are parallel. They look parallel, but without those indicators, without those arrows, I don't have any proof of that. Okay? So if I look at a picture, I can't necessarily assume the same way that just because two lines look like they're perpendicular to each other doesn't mean that they are unless I have some sort of indicator that they are. Okay? Appearances aren't equal to statements. Okay? So my parallel lines here show up with these arrows, okay, showing that those two lines have the same slope, showing that these two lines have the same slope and don't intersect. Okay, that's how we show parallel lines. So WX is parallel to ZY, and line WZ is parallel to line, uh, let's see, do I have that right? XY. Okay, and then we have our perpendicular lines, and the reason that I know that they're perpendicular is because I have an indicator. Okay, and if, well, we'll get into later theorems, but if a line is perpendicular to a line and a line is parallel to another line, then the two lines that are parallel are perpendicular to the same line. Okay, because they have the same slope. All right, if two lines are not in the same plane and they do not intersect, this was uh, part of our homework question whenever we were looking at something there. Let's see, that would have been in... I forget. Yeah, it would have been question 16 on lesson 4. It says any two, um, well, let's see, any three intersecting lines are coplanar. That's not necessarily what I'm thinking of, but um, yeah, it says any two lines are coplanar. Well, not if they don't intersect. Okay. So here you have line EF and line DH. They're not on the same plane. They don't intersect. They're going in different directions. Uh, they are what we call skew lines. Okay, they're not going to touch. They're not on the same plane. They're doing their own thing. They're independent of each other. Okay, so in the cube we see this example of skew lines. Can anybody give me an example of two other lines that are skew to each other? Okay, go ahead, Jordan. A, B, and C, G. That's exactly right. Those lines are skew. They're you know, going totally different directions. They're not going to intersect. They're not going to cross paths. But they're also not parallel. Okay? So if they don't intersect, they're not parallel. They're not in the same plane. They're what we call skew lines. Okay? Now we get into some theorems. All right? If two parallel planes, okay, imagine planes as just simply sheets of paper. Okay? That's, you know, 
technically speaking, a plane goes for an ever and ever in two dimensions, but to keep it so that you can actually see it, so that you can think about it, imagine planes as a sheet of paper. So if we have two parallel planes, for instance, let's get two parallel sheets of paper. Okay, can't see this in the video, but you guys can see it here. I've got two planes that are parallel to each other for all intents and purposes, right? Okay, we can see that. Are cut by a third plane, then the lines of intersection are parallel. Okay, so if it's cut through, I can't do this because I don't have like four hands. Okay, but if this were to cut through it, then all the lines of intersection would be parallel to each other. Okay. And they do a better job. If you look at page, uh, let's see. Uh, top of page 28 in your book. You're going to see some planes being cut by other planes. Uh, kind of like if you look here at the back of the room, um, this kind of bookshelf back here. We've got planes that are parallel. Okay, so we've got our top shelf. We've got our middle shelf. Those things are parallel to each other. They're being cut by a third plane, which is this support beam. Okay, the lines of intersection are going to be parallel to each other. Where we intersect is parallel. Okay, so that's how we get identify parallel planes. Uh, theorem 5-2 and dash 3, if two lines in a plane are perpendicular to the same line, then they're parallel to each other. Uh, this is what we're talking about here just a little bit ago. Okay, If I have a line here and a line here, and I know that those two things are parallel to each other, okay, two lines in a plane, if, they're, if this line right here, this A, is perpendicular to line C, then I know that line B, because it's parallel to line A, also has to be perpendicular to line C. And vice versa. And in fact, that's really what theorem 5-3 is. It's the converse of these things. In a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. And really, what I just described fits more with that. Okay, But they're just flipping. Okay, If I know one thing, I know the other. Okay, If I know the other thing, I know the first thing. Okay, you follow me so far? Confusing. Clear as mud. Okay. Okay. Here we have a diagram. The diagram of P is parallel to Q and R is perpendicular to Q. Okay, then R is also perpendicular to P by theorem 5-3. Essentially what I could do is I could say, well, because this line R is perpendicular to this line Q, and I know that line Q is parallel to line P, then what I can ultimately say is I know that R is perpendicular to P. Okay, that's what theorem 5-3 allows me to do. So lines are considered perpendicular when their intersection creates a single right angle, but all perpendicular lines actually create four right angles. So what I end up with is I end up with a right angle here, 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 and a right angle there. I end up with four right angles because what I've created is a complete circle. Okay, and how many degrees are in a complete circle? 360. What's 360 divided by 4? 90, right? I've divided a circle into four equal pieces, and so each one of these is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, because adjacent angles in this case are going to form supplementary pairs, okay, you're going to basically dividing 180 by 90 but I'm going to get that all the way around. So I'm going to get 90 in all places. Okay. So theorem 5-4, 5-5, 5-6, all describe the angles formed by perpendicular lines. And you'll see this pretty much everywhere you go, especially in construction. You're going to see perpendicular lines. Uh, right angles are probably some of the most important angles that you'll work with. Um, one of the biggest problems in construction is if something isn't square, right? Meaning that it's not at right angles, it's not level, it's not square. You know, uh, people that have problems with their homes, you'll have somebody come in and check 
well, here's the problem. Your foundation isn't square. And that causes everything else to be off. If the foundation isn't right, the rest of it will be wrong. So it is important. This stuff is important. Uh, one of the things that I want to start doing with you guys in terms of homework assignments is that I want you guys to, uh, for today's lesson, so I'm going to go ahead and give you an indicator. Okay? Whatever the assignment is, I want you to do all the questions that are assigned, but I want you to do one extra question for every assignment that we do. I want it to be the last question that you answer. Okay, the last question I want you to answer at the end of every assignment is, where can this possibly be used in real life? Okay, give me at least two sentences, at least two. Two is the minimum. You can write as many sentences as you want, but I want at least two sentences about how this is important for real life. Now, you're not working on the assignment right now, but that's one question I want you to answer. Okay, does that make sense? Because I get asked that question all the time. When will I ever use this in real life? I'm going to put that back on you. Research it. Look it up. How will I ever use perpendicular angles? How will I ever use parallel lines and perpendicular lines and all that stuff? Where, where does anybody ever use this? Okay, and I've tried to give you, at least for this lesson, that first big indicator, hey, this stuff does get used. All right, um, theorem 5-4, if two lines are perpendicular, then they form congruent adjacent angles. Okay, basically, here, I've got uh, two perpendicular lines, right? Okay, then they form congruent adjacent angles. What does the term congruent mean? Equal in shape and size. Okay, equal size and shape. Adjacent angles are angles that are next to each other. This angle and this angle would be adjacent angles. All right, if I know, if we call this angle A, we call this angle B, if angle A is 90 degrees, what does angle B have to be? Right, because perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. And then the vice versa of that. If two lines form congruent adjacent angles, meaning two adjacent angles are equal to each other, and they're adjacent, then they are perpendicular. Okay? Be okay, because if I were to, you know... Split it like that. Well, obviously, these two things are not equal to each other, right? I, if I would have to keep moving this blue line until the angles became equal. At the point where they become equal, they're both 90 degrees. Okay, the converse works. Okay, theorem 5-6, all right angles are congruent. What is the measure of a right angle? 90 degrees. So all 90 degree angles are equal to each other because they're all 90 degrees. Some of these are kind of no does statements. I don't want you to make th some of this stuff harder than it actually has to be. You all right? Okay. Okay. For any given line, there are an infinite number of other lines that are parallel to it. Basically, if I draw this line, and then I can draw this line, or 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 that line, or this line, or this line. Do you see how eventually I can come up with an infinite number of lines that are parallel to my first blue line, right? That don't touch it, but have the same slope. There's an infinite. And then if I wanted to, we could take things out three dimensionally, and I can't do that on a 2D board, but I could start drawing lines out from here, correct? I don't have to be just top and bottom. I could be out to the left or to the right or at an angle coming up like this, right? All they have to have is the same slope. All right. Uh, there are an infinite number of lines that are par parallel to it. However, there's only one that is parallel to another through a given point as stated in the parallel postulate. Okay, the parallel postulate says through a point, not on a line. Okay, so here's a point. And here's a line. That point is not on that line, right? Okay? There exists only one, exactly one line, through that blue dot there that is parallel to that red line. Okay? There's only one line that I can draw that's going to be parallel to this line right here that's going to go through that point. Okay? Does that make sense to us? Because, I mean, I can draw... Technically speaking, I can draw an infinite number of lines that go through that point, but only one of those lines is going to be parallel to this line right here. If it doesn't make sense, you won't get it, 
Okay, does it make sense? Okay, I get a couple of heads shaking up and down. All right, theorem 5-7, which is the transitive property of parallel lines. If two lines are parallel to the same line, then they're parallel to each other. For instance, we can say that, let's call this line A, this line B, and this line C. If line A is parallel to line B, okay, and I know that line B is parallel to line C, what I instinctively know is that line A is parallel to line C. Okay, that's the transitive property. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Do you follow me? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, that's it. So let's look at at least a couple of questions here. Uh, you guys are out of here. We'll try to go until about 8.50 and then give you 10 minutes to work. Question number one. Uh, question number one, they're not giving you a picture, so it might help to actually try to draw this. Suppose that we have line AB and line D and line DC. They're in the same plane, and they're perpendicular, but not to each other. They're perpendicular to line PQ. What is the relationship between those first two lines? All right, so the first thing I'd want to do is I'd want to draw line AB. Okay, and actually the next thing that I would do is actually draw line PQ, okay, because I know that PQ is what to line AB? What does it say? Perpendicular, right? So I know that they have to cross, correct? So they're not only going to cross, but they're going to cross at what? What kind of angle? I heard somebody say it. A right angle. So I know this, right? Okay? And I know that line DC lies in the same plane. Okay? So it's in the same plane. And they're both perpendicular to PQ. So let's draw another line perpendicular to PQ. Okay? We got DC. What is the relationship between those two lines right there? What are they to each other? They're parallel to each other. Okay? Can you tell me what theorem would tell me that? I'll give you a hint. It's on page 28. You only have to narrow it down between the five theorems that show up on page 28. This is the reason that I write these notes up here, because you do need to refer back to them. How do I know that line AB and line DC, which theorem would tell me that they're going to end up being parallel to each other? Go ahead, Marcos. 5-3. He says, he says, in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, Okay, that's assuming that I already know that those two lines are parallel, right? Then it is perpendicular to the other one. We didn't know that. All we knew is that PQ was perpendicular to both AB and DC. So which theorem is it? Go ahead. 5-2. If two lines in a plane, okay, are AB and DC in the same plane? Yeah, because that's what it says. Okay, if two lines in the same plane are perpendicular to the same line, okay, Lines A, B, and D, C in the same plane are perpendicular to P, Q, so they're perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. Okay? So I don't just read off these theorems to hear myself talk. That We actually have questions that are going to use this. If we want to pass our test, we might have to remember some of these things, okay? If you have questions, that's the reason I ask, you know, does that make sense? Because if it doesn't make sense to you, you won't understand it for the test. My goal for you is to pass the test. Not only pass the test, but do well on it. Okay? All right. Um, I'm not necessarily concerned with the answer key here. Um, I'm concerned with, you know, can you identify parallel lines? Uh, let's see. Jose, can you name me two parallel lines? H, E, and G, F. Okay? Those look like they could be parallel. Okay? Uh, let's see. Jordan, parallel lines.
Yeah. Very good. H, G, and D, C. That'll work. Okay. Uh, Chandler. E, A, and F, B. Okay. And I would go so far as to say that E, A is also parallel to H, D, couldn't I? Is this line parallel to that line? Okay. I could also say that E, A is parallel to G, C, couldn't I? Yeah. All four of those lines are parallel to each other. Right? Okay. Not only that, but uh, let's see, Jose's H, E is also parallel to what else? B, C. Okay. And what else? What's that? A, D. Very good. Okay. And let's see, Jordan's H, G is also parallel to what else? A, B. And what else? EF. Okay, so there's a lot of different sets of parallel lines that we could write there. Okay? All right, we're going to stop there. Let you guys work on your homework, let you ask questions. Um, hopefully, some of this made sense. <laughs>